world all his own. He has taken us to the cinema and showed us wonderful stories, from Bottle Rocket to Rushmore, from the fantastic Mr. Fox to the Royal Tannenbaums, Moonrise Kingdom, and the new Grand Budapest Hotel. And he's done it all in his own unique and imitable style. Hello, I'm Ernie Manus. Coming up on interviews, our conversation with Academy Award-nominated screenwriter and director, Wes Anderson. dreams at all mirror what your films look like? Well, my sleeping dreams, I don't even really remember. But my dreams as, for instance, the last movie I made, which is Moonrise Kingdom, it's called, that That one I think is really based on a fantasy I had as a kid. You know, it's, I've drawn some things from my own childhood, but the main thing is a, a sort of dream I had as a child of, 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 a, of a romance that didn't actually happen. That's really the inspiration for the movie. I often ask people, if we were to take all of their body of work and put it together and then look at it, what would that tell us about them? And so I wonder, with your body of work, if I put it together, would I have a better understanding of who you are? Yeah, probably. I mean, I, you know, I don't know if you have a better understanding, but you'd have a lot of information about me, I think, anyway. Whether, however, we, however one would interpret it, I don't know. Um, but I think... Um, you you know the movies I've made, which now a lot. I mean, I've been doing this stuff for years. And yeah, I think I've made eight or so movies. Um, they're all they're all movies that are made up from scratch. They're not adapted from anything. So I and, and although I've always worked with a writing partner, I d different people on each movie. There's some degree to which whatever is whatever is coming from my imagination is probably you know inspired by my background and my own whatever psychology or something so I'm sure that without me controlling it or choosing to I'm in the movies. So what really fascinates me about what you do is the process by which you say you work with a co-writer. I love hearing how you guys put this together. Um, well the y you know actually the last one we did a, a lot of the script in Italy. Uh, uh, one of the movies before that uh, one I made years ago Life Aquatic um, we, sh we uh, my co-writer Noah Baumbach, my old friend, he and I wrote it in a in an Italian restaurant in New York where we where we were g where we went every day anyway. Um, but this last one, the the last Moonrise Kingdom, I wrote. Uh, I I tried to write it for a year and was uh, struggling and failing, and then I met my friend Roman in Rome and uh, just by chance and. Um, I asked him to help me, and we ended up making the whole uh, script there uh, together. Um, and um, and then this new movie, Grand Budapest Hotel, um, th this one I wrote with my friend Hugo, and we wrote it in England. Um, so they kind of have taken me all over the world, these things. So when you do collaborate with someone, though, yep. you're saying with one that you had worked on it for a year and couldn't get it going, what for you is the advantage of working with someone else? Why does that help you? create because all of your films no matter who your co-writer are feel like they come from you so yeah. what are they bringing to the table well well first of all they're bringing lines and uh and questions and ideas i mean they're bringing everything i'm bringing in a way you know we're we, usually i think there are people who i've uh, who they're always my friends and there are people who i've brought in to help me do the thing i want to do so there's some degree to which they know they're there to help me rather than that we're, we're not going to fight about where we wanted to go it's they, they're going to let me kind of guide it a bit but th the movies are filled with their ideas and i and so I, I what i want from them is both it that it makes it more fun for me that i feel like i work longer and harder on the thing because i'm having more fun because I, we're talking it out and we're entertaining each other and then they give me lots and lots of ideas that i can you know i i do the actual physical writing but um, but you know I I mean on on Moonrise Kingdom it, I, I I was trying to just do it on my own and I and it was a, a very very slow going, mm -hmm. and when I got help, it was very very fast. When you do collaborate though, when you're creating the story, when you're putting this, and uh, saying creating the story seems wrong too from what I've read of how you go about this process because it's ideas of characters, characters studies come up, uh, scenes come up, moments come up, and it kind of evolves into the plot, correct? Well, 
It, you know, it depends. Most of these movies I've done, it would probably be an exaggeration to say they have a plot, <laughs> <laughs> any one of them. Um, this new one, I think, does. Yeah. I mean, this one actually has, uh, th this happens, and then this happens, and then this happens, and it's all connected. Um, but, um, but I would say that to make a movie, you know, you know, to make a good movie, in most cases, you need a lot of ideas and you need a, a, a lot of material. And it's not, and you know, it would, to keep it going for 90 minutes or 95 minutes or two hours or whatever it is, um, you've got to, it's got to, it's got to hold a lot of, a lot of information and a lot of feeling and um, and observations about whatever it is. Um, so, um, so for me, you know, even even if you have kind of, a, even if you have a plot. You've still got to fill it with things, and you've got to build up something, and you've got to kind of research and gather ideas, and um, and and to and fr from at least my kind of movie, it they they sort of need that. Yeah. When you start the first day of shooting, is the script concrete? Is it done at that point, or are you still evolving as you go? Usu I think the script is usually there. Um, I mean, the script is usually the thing we don't change, but. And and by the time we're on the first day of shooting, we've all we've done another thing after the script. We've you know finished the script, and then we've spent a lot of time figuring out how are we going to do this, and what is it going to be, and what is it going to look like, and and a whole different set of you know with, with this with this Grand Budapest Hotel movie, we w the script was done, but I had no idea what the movie would look like or or just any sense of how we would go about it. We really went back to square one with a script in hand, um, but the one thing that is totally in the air, up in the air, is what are the actors going to do with it? And, I, and, and that, as, as planned as it may be, and as set as the, d as the, as the dialogue is, they improvise everything about how they're going to do it. And it's, all, it's, 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 it's pretty chaotic on the set because I, I, nobody really knows what's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> do you find surprises then when you're working that way? Is it like, wow, look at yeah, that? It yeah. Worked. <laughs> oh, definitely. I, I, I get there are surprises all the time. I mean, every take, the actors bring some surprise, really. Yeah. Does that change, though, working with, oftentimes you work with the same, I know you bring other people in and out, but there seems to be a core acting studio of yours, a group of folks that come back or at least get your sensibility in a certain way. Does that hinder or help do you think in the long term of what your projects are going to be? Well, the, the, the actors who I've worked with over and over again, there's a whole bunch of them, um, they're all, uh, almost all people who I knew their work before I knew them and I was a fan. Yeah. So for me, you know, they're, they're people who I've had, who I've had fun with before and, um, and enjoyed working with before, but mainly they're just people who I like to see them in movies, you know, whose work I love. Um, and so I go back to them just, you know, because I have the luxury of knowing how to reach them directly and, you know, to try to, g you know, uh, convince them to get involved in one of these movies. Um, I think it benefits from, uh, I, I somehow, you know, there are movies where I feel like if you see too many familiar faces, it starts to feel like the cameos and it mm -hmm. can take away from it. You wish right. you just had some fresh faces. Um, I, my, I mean, I hope I'm right, but my, my feeling about it is with a movie like this one, it can, ho it can hold those, you know, it can hold a lot of famous actors. You know, it can, ha it can hold the stars because they're playing characters that tend to be a bit uh, exaggerated. Um, and uh, they're... Um, you know, with this one, I kind of thought of like kind of Dickens characters that are yeah. that are that uh, that have uh, that hopefully have depth, but are also sort of caricatures. And we've got a lot of those in this story. Well, it's reminiscent of maybe like the 1930s acting, those overhyped melodramas where they they acted and they were real characters, but there was a style that didn't happen in everyday life. In, in the case of a movie like this. The, the kind of dialogue that we that I tend to write it's I don't know what it is but it's not quite like reality right. it's something <laughs> a little beyond that and the sets and the costumes and all those things those are those are definitely uh, um, you know somewhat more uh, th those are there's a certain exaggeration in all that stuff um, and they're almost jokes in the clothes and the and the mustaches um, I feel like how they play it in that context, they usually just try to make it as real as they can. But in this movie, they're also talking very fast, and there's a there's a there's a rhythm that's a, that's that's not quite reality. But 
they, they, what I feel like these actors do is they take all this stuff and then they just try to make it real yeah. and spontaneous. Um, and it's a, and I guess it's an unusual mixture. I go back and forth looking at your work and thinking either you're painting pictures with each frame, with each shot, or you're putting on a stage show in some ways. How do you, is that something that's conscious or is it just a style that's developed for the way you shoot what you shoot? I think it's the, 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 the latter. Um, you know, usually, well, with a with, with, with movie like this one, the, we're, we're trying to make a kind of a big story and we're not a $100 million movie. You know, we're a smaller, a budget kind of movie, but I don't want to, I, I write, you know, we wrote the script just what we wanted and it has ski chases and it goes uh, you know it has these alpine you know monastery you know monastery and observatory and it's it's got trains and it's got uh you know it's it, it's got three different time periods maybe four different time periods a huge grand hotel it's it's a big movie um so how we get that how we get this story done requires um a lot of sort of invention um, and I don't like to come up with an, uh, if I say, okay, w we don't have the budget for three weeks of ski chase shooting. Um, we're not going to Switzerland. How are we going to do this, a part of the movie? And what I want to do is find a way to do that part of the story where I have no, where I prefer it to if we had had the money to go do it. So I've got to come up with something that I'm, that I have not just no regrets, that I prefer this to what we would have done otherwise, and it fits into our tone and everything. That's, I think, where it can start to be a bit of a painting, a bit of a um, uh, st uh, theater production. The solutions, we've used miniatures, and we've used, uh, we've used a actual painted uh, backdrops, and we've used all kinds of old-fashioned movie techniques that I love, and hopefully it makes the whole thing stick together and can give it a sort of storybook quality, and it can have a lot of detail and and layers of uh, you know visual whatever it is um, extra ingredients. When you think about all these things, and you talk about putting this stuff on the screen, when you're writing, does that ever hinder you? Do you ever uh, can you be so in the moment writing that you don't think about can I make this work? Can you free I, yourself? I, of that? I think always. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I I I I, I think. I will think about I will I will sort of spot, sort of automatically think a bit about what might be some solutions, but I always will just write the thing um, because you know many times I've done things that uh, yeah, you know I know if 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 we did take this script and just hand it over to somebody who makes movie budgets, they would come back with something <laughs> you know, mu much 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 higher than you know, you know an, yeah. an unshootable movie. Um, but. You know, I like having. I I, I, I prefer to, to to get to a point and say, okay, I've done something impossible. How are we going to do it? That's more that's more fun to me, anyway. Would you like to work with an unlimited budget? Would you like to make one of those? Or is part of the charm of what you do for you making it work on what you can? I I did a movie that was uh, years ago. I did one that was uh, you know it was a big budget movie. It was sixty sixty. Two million dollar budget or fifty-two million dollar budget, and we went over. We we spent we spent sixty. You know, we <laughs> went eight million dollars <laughs> over. We were scheduled to do a very long shoot of eighty days, and we shot for a hundred. Um, and it was, um, and I didn't like it. You know, I didn't like yeah. working that way. It it, it was. Uh, we did things that um, that that had a big a large scale, which I which I wanted to do, but it wasn't efficient and it wasn't fun. Okay, so then take me all the way back. As a kid, was this always what you wanted to do? Um, I, you know, at one point, uh, I, I think the first thing I wanted to do when I was a kid was to be an architect. And then um, I wanted to, when I was in high school, I really wanted to be a writer. That's, mm -hmm. I think that's, what, that's how I saw myself. Um, but I did always do little short plays uh, as a kid, and I, all, and I made Super 8 little you know kind of movies yeah. um, and I did this all all along so somehow you know I mean what I do now combines some of these things um, and um, uh, I think in, in a way um, I had this uh, this thing in mind um, without quite putting my finger on it yeah how much does Rushmore mirror your high school years I think it's a combination of my high school years and Owen Wilson's you know we wrote it together and it's, I, I think this character's kind of got us both in it. Um, yeah. You know, he puts on plays in the, in, the, um, in the movie, and those plays are 
kind of based on plays I did as a kid, and we filmed in my school. Um, but um, but it uses it, it. It definitely has a lot of very specific things from both of our uh, you know both of our high school and, and middle school years. Um, but then also it's got lots of stuff that's just invented. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How hard was it to go back to your school? I mean, how strange was that? Were there still faculty that you knew? Was there still people around me like, yeah. oh, there's Wes again. You know what I mean? <laughs> there, there were, there were pl plenty of the same uh, faculty. Yeah. Um, and in fact, one of my classmates is in the movie and even became our sort of liaison. He helped, you know, what he, what he did was he, he helped me cast all the, uh, we had a lot of uh, kids in the movie who were kids who went to school where we were shooting. And I, we, I just thought, let's get guys who are here. Um, so um, he helped me pick those people. He picked those people. He gave me a selection of people who he thought would be good. And I more or less used them all. And the lead, though, a hard role to cast. I heard something you did a year casting to find Yeah, we your did. Max. We did. Yeah, we you know, we were we were writing the script then anyway, so we were, it was okay that we could take the time. Um, but we started I, the thing I've learned is to when you have a part where you need to 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 sort of discover somebody, where you're not going to use somebody where it's a young person and they're and you're not just going to pick from the kind of existing actors. You're you're, you're essentially looking for a non-actor who you want to make into an actor. Um, <laughs> Y that takes a lot of time. Um, yeah. I've done I've done it several times. This new movie, we have this kid who's uh, who plays this character of a uh, he's a lobby he's a sort of uh, page. We call him a lobby boy in the story, and um, we looked. He he's supposed to be from the Middle East. We we looked all over the Middle East and North Africa and all over Europe. We found him in Anaheim. And it was after seven <laughs> seven months of looking, um, and we found this great kid called Tony Revolori. But you know, we we didn't know where he where he was going to come from. We had no idea. Yeah. What is it though that you think you bring out of a child actor? Because you had such strong performances from them throughout your career in your films, and it's a very difficult thing to work, especially when you say you're working, oftentimes with unknowns when you first get them. Yeah. What is it? What's the key to it? Do you think? Well, you know, I don't know. I think the main key to it is take your time and find the right ones because it's yeah. going to be on their shoulders and they and 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 you know, these are guys who are going to be they need to be interesting in and of themselves. What you know, it's got it's not up to me. It's 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 are they interesting enough to look at for this whole period of time and and can they do it? Yeah. Also, child uh, a child actor usually you find they can do it or they can't. They like to pretend and they seem authentic when they pretend or they don't have that knack. And that's something that just exists beforehand. Also, you you know, what with most of them, what's happening is they're not just doing their first movie part. Sometimes they've been in something before. But the main thing is they've never had a job. You know, they don't know what it's like to have to show up every day and do this thing. And you need somebody who's going to have that kind of resilience and... and and want to kind of uh, step up, um, and I've uh, and I've usually found that what happens is they're the ones who they memorize the entire script. They 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 remember everything. The other the professional actors mess up, and these kids tell them your your line is this, <laughs> and uh, you say it, and then he can do that, and um, you know they become uh, the most knowledgeable people on the set. Um, but then the other thing is, it you know we always have fun. Um, yeah. So uh, you know I, I I I they they become a part of a family. And um, and um, yeah, they're usually a lot of fun. You mentioned earlier you have to get a hold of these actors, and you're, you come, they're people you can get a hold of. Yeah. Bill Murray, not an easy person to get a hold of. Kind of does things in his own way. Yeah. You two have built quite a relationship working together. Yeah. Well, we've done uh, I think seven, yeah. something like seven movies together, um, and um, the first one was here in Houston, um, uh, Rushmore, and. You know, he's somebody who's not just, he's, a, he's one of my favorite actors. He was before I ever met him. Um, but he's also somebody who's very valuable on a movie set. He's, 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 he's good for morale. Um, really? Oh, yeah. He's, you know, he's, if you ever wanted to get 350 people to suddenly do something spontaneously, you know, give them instructions, he's the best person for that. And I've many times said to him, can you just get this crowd to do this? And he can... He likes to do that, and people do what he says, and they and he makes them laugh while they're doing it. Um, 
and um, yeah, he's you know he's I've had great experiences with him. I've had him play big parts and small parts, and he's uh, you know he's kind of backed me uh, for years. Do you get to the point where you feel like you're part of the establishment, or do you still feel like you're this wide-eyed kid that's so lucky to be working in their field? Well, I feel like I, cer I certainly don't feel like a part of a, any establishment because. I make my movies in different places all over the world. You know, I've n I, I've never made a movie in in Los Angeles. That's yeah. the center of the you know our kind of film world. Although movies are shot all over America, obviously a lot lots here in Texas. Um, but um, but I do feel kind of like I've got my own systems in place. I've got a yeah. lot of people who I've worked with over and over again. Not, not just the actors, but lots of the 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 people who work in other capacities on these movies and. Um, and we've figured out an approach th for in, uh, we've fi figured out lots of different approaches that work well for for my kind of movie. Um, so e I, I would say I don't feel completely wide-eyed because I feel like we've got too many systems in place and too many. You know, yeah. the other thing is also making a movie. You're usually so busy that there's not really time to feel wide-eyed. You've got to be pretty <laughs> military about it all. But there has to be moments where certain actors come on the set and you think. Well, I'm working with them. At least that's like I'm sitting down here talking to you, and I'm thinking, "Well, wow, I'm getting to talk to Wes Anderson." I mean, there's those moments where you're still, yeah. And I'm just wondering if you go through those, and then how do you put that to a place where you can then tell Bill Murray how to do something or things like that? Yeah. Well, that's two. Yeah, that's two things. W one, always, especially when it's an actor who I haven't worked with before, but often when it's somebody I have worked before. First, there's the experience of just you know, seeing somebody playing a scene uh, that you've written and bringing it to life and, and you say, saying, here is Rafe Fiennes being our character, that's very exciting. And that's, uh, and if you want to be wide-eyed, that's a great yeah. moment for it. And, you know, that's, that is the feeling of that. Um, but, um, but, the, but then in terms of directing them, well, first of all, they don't necessarily need a lot of direction, but I have this advantage of the fact that I've probably been, I've probably spent an extra year and a half with this material, and they've, you know, they may have prepared some things, but I, th I know it all. I know the story so much better. I know all the details. I know where we're going to shoot this other thing and how it's going to fit together right. theoretically. So I've just got so much more information. It makes you confident when you when you can say, well, here's what, here's why we should do it this way or this way. Um, but you know, it's always it, 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 the, the the actors. They're really in charge of, of what they're going to do. So I'm just there to kind of maybe every now and then steer it a bit. Yeah. Um, yep. Are you sure of where you're going to go next, or are you still in the last film? How soon does that shift for you? I I, I think I'm still in the last film. Uh, yeah. um, I you know I I um. I traveled from uh, New York to Los Angeles recently by train. We got a little train car, which was a great experience. And um, and my uh, friend, who I'm w talking about, uh, an animated movie with, he he traveled with me, and so that we could work on this story idea. So we did have three days of uh, of, of work on this uh, new animated idea. But as soon as I got off the train, I was into back into the Grand Budapest Hotel, yeah. this current movie, and uh, you know I've been doing one thing or another related to this movie. You mentioned anime and it takes back to Mr. Fox and I wonder you talk so much about the collaborative effort with these actors and having actors and they kind of know what to do and they how is it when you don't really have actors? Well with an animated movie especially a stop-motion movie which is what Fantastic Mr. Fox uh, yeah. is um, it in a way you get more of that uh, first because the process of recording the actors is very very free mm -hmm. um, the fact that it that we're not seeing them and they can move around and do whatever he wants it it, it you end up it, uh, to me it feels more improvisational and people it just gets a little wilder you work i mean at least my system is we work very quickly we 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 recorded most of the voices for mr fox on location we went out on a farm we went you know we went um we went uh we we part of it we did in italy part of part of it we did in new england and some of it in England, and we tried to stay for indoor scenes. We recorded them inside somewhere, but on location inside. For outdoor scenes, we went outside. We went in the woods, and you know, uh, we 
film industry. Which is really surprising. People don't know the industry. It's almost all done in a sound booth somewhere. So this is it, really... Yeah, that's the way it's always done. Yeah, um, yeah this is a different way to do it. Um, and it was fun. And the actors brought a tremendous amount of their own personalities and ideas into that process. Yeah. Then you edit that and you do storyboards and make a kind of cartoon, a drawn sketch version of the movie with those recordings. And the animators then take that and they are like actors. Y even though you may plan, and you do plan, all the things that are going to happen in the course of a stop motion shot, which is you know frame by frame, and they're moving these puppets by hand, the, the animators, how they're going to do it, they don't even entirely know, even though they know they need to be, if they get to from A to B to C, the process of it, they're surprising themselves as they do it. The way they mm -hmm. make these puppets seem alive is mysterious and they are like actors and every animator is different and they have a different kind of style and voice. Do you have the same kind of discipline in your personal life that you have in your professional life? Um, no, I don't think so, no. Yeah? No, I'm, la I'm, I'm lazy. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 when I'm working, I am, I have, I, I'm not lazy at all, I, I, that's the one thing, but I, I'm the kind of person who would, you know, be asked to sweep the floor, and then later you see it's uh, it's, it's uh, under the, you know, it's, uh, we didn't use it, uh, yeah, um, <laughs> and that's not the way I work. I'm right. on my movies. Well, I'm happy that you've been on the movies you've been on. Thank you so much for the joy Thank you brought you, us, Ryan. the stories you've told, and the visuals you've given us. Thank you so much. What a pleasure to be on the show with you. Thank you, Wes Anderson.